In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use analytic solver to perform hierarchical clustering. This is our data set. It contains 30 loan applicants, their age, gender, income, marriage status, number of children, car loan, and mortgage status. So we're going to use the data mining tab. If you install the analytics solver, you will see this tab um, in your Excel. And under the cluster, we choose hierarchical clustering. So automatically it detects the only worksheet, which is called data in this Excel file. If you have multiple worksheet, you can always select the data file from the drop down here. Make sure that to check the first row contains headers because we do have headers instead of data in the first row. Uh, by default, if you're first time using it, you should see all the variables in the input data on the left pane. And so you can click each to, you can double click or select one and click on the arrow to move them to the right side. In this, uh, exercise we're going to select four variables the gender marriage status loan status and mortgage status notice that all these four variables are categorical variables in our data you can see that the values are boolean meaning they have either one or zero as the values so this is another uh, thing to consider when to use hierarchical clustering is uh, it is the best to use with the categorical variables like this. Now we click the next. And because it's already ones and zero, it doesn't matter you normalize the input data or not. And for the uh, similarity measure, we choose uh, matching coefficients. Matching coefficient measures similarity between observations based on the number of matching values of categorical variables. So if you use a formula, matching coefficient is equals to the number of variables with matching values for observation one and observation two divided by the total number of variables. Next, for the clustering method, we would like to choose group average linkage. Group average linkage consider distance between each pair of observations between two clusters. For example, cluster 1 has n observations and cluster 2 has m observations, then total is n by m pairs. Group average linkage consider average similarities of all pairs of observation between the two clusters. So the strength of this method is that no dominant pairs of observations like single or complete linkage will bring. Now we click next. So we want to make sure that we select the jaw dendrogram so we can see a visualization of the clusters. We also want to select the maximum number of leaves. So in this case, we select 10. If you select the equal amount to the number of records you have in here, then you will have each leaf represent a single record. Of course, that will be very different between each record. Uh, however, that's not the goal for clustering. So you will always want to have a maximum number of leaves less than your number of records. And next, we want to make sure we check the show cluster membership. And the number of clusters in here, we choose three. So there's no black or white answers for choosing the number of clusters, but there are methods to how many we should usually choose. So we typically choose a odd number of the clusters and usually under a number of 10. Main point of clustering is to see if you can output a meaningful clusters that you can interpret Right. So like the group of things, do they have commonality within a cluster? And then uh, next time when we talk about k-means clustering, we actually have uh, indexes and graphics that help us to pick the best number of clusters. That is the best k. So in here, we just choose the number of cluster B3. 
another limitation of the analytic software education license is you can only process 500 records at most and as we know that hierarchical clustering is has a lot of overhead so the more records you have the slower it runs just keep that in mind now we click finish so after it's done you we will see that three new worksheets are created and they all has the um, beginning name of hc stands for hierarchical clustering this way, even if later you perform multiple algorithms uh, on the same data set, you will be able to tell which outputs belong to which algorithms by its names. Let's take a look at HC output. So this worksheet will show us the summary of the input. It shows us the data sheet, number of records. It shows us the variables that we chose and the methods that we chose to run. And then it also shows us the clustering stages. So the clustering stages um, represents the process that the clustering is forming. For example, at stage one, cluster four contains only observation four and cluster five containing only observation five. And then they're aggregated and the resulting cluster results in a zero increase in dissimilarity because this class contain identical observations. And then in the stage two, four and five is combined and labeled as cluster four for stage two. And then they are going to combine with observation six in the cluster two and so on. In the next worksheet, we have HC clusters, which shows us all 30 records and which cluster they were put into. So you will see the total of three clusters, each record will belong one of the three clusters. We'll come back to this information to find out the summary of each cluster. In the HC dendrogram, we actually see the cluster legend, which contains numbers show the record sequence relevant to the original data. More importantly, in here, we can see the dendrogram. However, because I'm using a Mac version of the Excel for some reason, the dendrogram pop-up window doesn't display. However, I do have a screenshot from when I use a Windows version to run and the dendrogram displays. So I'm going to show it to you. So here's the dendrogram that pop up uh, using the Windows version. And as we can see, we can draw a line on this uh, level and there will be three vertical lines that we intersect. And that's the three clusters. And this is also these two clusters showing the uh, highest difference in height and which shows the um, it's reasonable to end at the three clustering here uh, to minimize the cost. So back in the HC cluster worksheet, we would like to get a summary and understand what does each cluster mean? What do the records within each cluster have commonality? So we're going back to our data sheet, copy the data and paste into the clustering result. And we highlight all and we're going to create the pivot table for this. So we insert pivot table and we're going to display in the same worksheet somewhere in here and click OK. Now we're going to select um, the clusters as the rows and uh, we also had our variables when we selected gender, marriage, loan and mortgage. Okay, last not the least, we want to have a count of the record ID. So now we have a pivot table showing us the summary. For example, cluster one contains 17 people. 10 of them are female, which means cluster one has most females. And 15 are married. And none of them has car loans. Five of them has mortgage. So this is our cluster one. In contrast, our cluster two has only six people. All of them are male and 
only five of them are married. They, six of them has car loan, but only two of them has mortgage and so on. So now we have a picture of a pretty different three clusters. Now we completed the hierarchical clustering using analytic solver.